<clears throat> hey, hi, Glenn here, workshop at the garden, and I am finishing the second load on this wood drying kiln that I refer to as the Solar Kiln Plus um, Hot Box. And in this video, I am going to walk you through the very beginning from when I started to build it to get it to this point. We're not done with it, there's still a fair amount of work, but I have enough content that I want to share with you on what we did to get it this far so we can start drying wood. Here we go. Well, first of all, thanks so much for stopping in and checking this video out. I'm going to walk you through the process and the decisions I made to put this kiln together. I will also give you a lot of the insights and the, you know, the caveats that I dealt with in this build. So it will be, um, I, I, well, I do get asked a lot, do you have plans for this kiln? And I don't. I started with the basics and kind of where everyone else starts, the Virginia Tech solar kiln plans. Uh, easily find them, just Google it, download it. I'll probably put a link in the description. And then the other plan that I, I worked with was the Nile kiln chamber build for the smaller L53 which gave me a lot of the insulating, where to put barriers, but we will cover all of that. So one of the big caveats uh, that I like to do is reuse things. I like to start with scraps and then figure it out. I don't always build from brand new. So about 15 years ago, I dismantled the deck and kept all the big two by green treated boards. And about eight years ago, I put together a base out in my yard that was going to be a tool shed and it sat there for a long time long before I even did any of the woodworking and finally one day I said hey that base that isn't finished would be a perfect solar kiln so I dragged it into the shop two years ago and I have this little policy if something enters the shop it doesn't leave till it's done that can be painful because I've been working around this kiln for two years but I'm slowly um uh, slowly working my way through the kiln and also that's been very helpful there are a couple of facebook groups about drying wood and kiln drying so don't always have to participate and be the loudest voice in there you just can sit and read and pick up from other builders on what they're doing so um, we've got a little bit of time as I walk you through this so understanding the first thing that I did is I insulated the floor uh, we have red squirrels here in Minnesota, and they love to chew into anything and everything. So I did put some hardware cloth in the bottom of uh, the floor that was in there. I think if I did this from scratch beginning, I would do the spacing further than 12 inches off center than I did. I think you could probably go all the way up to 24 inches off center. But this was at 12, so I dealt with it and went from there. Put in a piece of plywood to hold... Um, that wire mesh down and then used rigid foam on the bottom i think there were two two inch pieces and a one inch piece so decent insulation on the bottom uh, floor did a vapor barrier of poly my vapor barrier is going to be on the inside you'll see that throughout the build um, this is what the piece that i did take from the Nile build and that was that they do the foil insulation and then a vapor barrier six mil poly and I use six mil, mil clear poly so it was easy to see and work in and around that went on the floor the whole interior is getting a um, 7 16 so just shy of a half inch piece of plywood don't need that because you can just leave the insulation it's not really adding any R value but I know me, and I'm going to be using skid loaders and throwing slabs in there by myself, and I needed that wear coat. Otherwise, I'd be punching holes through um, styrofoam or just the insulation board endlessly. The base that I brought in was 4 feet deep, 12 feet wide, and I wanted it to be just a little bit bigger for the solar kiln. The idea was that I might be loading slab skids that are 11 feet long wide with a skid loader so I just wanted a little bit more space so I decided to build a shelf all the way around attach that to the side of the base and that's what I built the walls up from there the walls I did try to put 16 off center so uh, insulation bats would fit right in there nice and easy 
And one of the big the big decisions that I had to make early on is the slope of the the collector itself. The Virginia Tech kiln talks about taking your latitude and adding the difference between where they are in Virginia. So my location in Minnesota is 10 degrees more. So I added 10 degrees to the 45 that they recommended and I came up with a 55 degree pitch for Minnesota where I'm located. And, and that's, that's where I came up with that angle. I also wanted to, you know, figure out my package size in there, which was going to be somewhere in the 600 board foot range. I'm going to say 400 to 800, depending on what it is. And that a stack of wood would get, um, somewhere between four and a half to five and a half feet tall in there. So the door opening is six feet. But that also means the that back wall or the front wall needed to be at least four and a half feet. So those are some of the numbers. And then it, what my drawing that I did put together was simple, very, very simple, just to give me that uh, angle. Another piece that I showed up with is you'll, you'll find a lot of people discussing different things, what to use. I used a double wall polycarbonate that came from my local big box, Menards. Um, they're four by eight sheets, so I have to deal with that being the size. Now I could source, there's acrylics out there that stay clear and are better and more expensive. I built this whole thing so the polycarbonate could be changed. I can upgrade that. We can do different things at that time. Um, but I'm probably going to always end up working with four by eight sheets of the, the solar, the window area. And I believe it's one square foot of surface to 10 board feet. So I have more than enough surface uh, open for collecting, for solar collecting, for this whole piece. The plus part. So you've heard me talk about the solar kiln plus. The idea was, and this is an idea that you can talk amongst yourselves and, and leave comments, um, moisture doesn't move out of wood when the wood is frozen, when the water in the wood is frozen. So the idea to put some oil heaters inside there so this will work during the winter. Minnesota has a super low relative humidity, but the wood, if the wood is frozen, it's not going to dry. So I'm thinking about heating it up and keeping the wood from freezing and getting the solar gain to dry the wood. I know it's going to take longer, but it's just the lowest inputs that you can have for um, drying, drying wood. So that's why I insulated the heck out of it. So some of the walls are two by six, some of the walls are two by four. They all have bat insulation, fiberglass insulation. I'm not worried about them getting too wet and moldy and that. The vapor barrier is on the inside, it'll move out. Um, it'll be just fine. On top of the bad insulation, I did put a one inch um, foil insulation, foil side out. I'm just going to throw out everything that I did. Will can handle 160, 190 degrees if it gets there, so I'm not worried about combustion once this, especially once this gets moved outside. But on top of the foil, I did tape all of the seams, all of the holes. And then I also used um, Volcom caulking on every single seam just to prevent any little, um, little air gaps. You're going to have some. It's impossible, but tried to minimize as many as possible. All these angles are a lot of fun. So you're cutting each one and trying to fit it in there. Um, I'm not a house builder, so I learn all these little things about having to put backing in and adding more little spacers and planning. Uh, happy with the way that it turned out. Uh, the next one, I say that with a little bit of uh, joking, but I'm planning another one. I, what I've learned in this one will definitely end up in the next one. It's always fun. Every time you, you finish a part of a, a a little part of the build you feel like you're made it somewhere and then you realize that the whole next piece you have to figure out one of the connections that was really challenging um, is where the rafters ended up on the top i had to come up with some type of detail that was going to enclose all of those so i ended up 
boxing the whole top and then filling that box with spray foam. Notice the orange, and that's the fire rated orange spray foam. Um, and there we are taping it all in place. And I, I really wanted a good connection up on top because as the heat sits up there, especially when you're paying to heat it in the winter, you want as minimal um, heat loss as possible. Volcom's going on. This is just kind of a great uh, little showcase of the whole build where the bats went in, the foil insulation went on, the vapor barrier went on, and then we put the plywood on top of that. Another example of those little things that I'll have to figure out is um, I did put the four vent holes on the top there. I still have the doors to figure out. If you've been following along on Facebook or Instagram, which on the Facebook, if you follow me there, Workshop at the Gardens on Facebook, there is an album there that has well over 100 images of the details of this build, so that might be worth uh, checking out. But just a little thing like I cut the vent holes, and that's really cool, but I have to figure out exactly how I'm going to cover the vent holes and put screens on there for summer, but also for winter. So that, that's what I mean. There's just all these little things that show up. Uh, next up is figuring out the fans. The fans came from Menards as well, and they are just attic fans. Uh, adequate work great. Um, they spin. There is, a, there is actually a number out there that you can figure how much airflow you need for each individual stack. I went with three fans and I didn't do all the calculations, so you can hate on me if you want, but the three fans, um, with the two loads I've done so far, they've been adequate. They've been pushing uh, air all the way through and it's been pretty good. All right, time for some electrical and wiring. Uh, now that now that the fans are kind of all in place, well, they're not in place. I got to finish that build. Here we go. Um, put them in, and again, I'm cutting individual pieces as you measure each one and figure as it fits in there. But I'm also really liking this build because this this part stiffened it up um, those rafters quite nicely, and then I just did a straight drop down. If you're thinking about building one of these, you already know the concept. You have your your black, your solar collective. It heats up and you push that air through. So the fans in this will, are pushing forward um, towards the polycarbonate down through the stack of wood. And then up on the backside, fresh air comes in and humid air, the moisture that's come out of the wood can escape. Um, I'll talk a little bit about, because I also call this a hot box kiln because I needed to dry some wood. I closed it all up and put a dehumidifier inside there with the oil heaters, and that's what you'll see at the end. Um, successfully, I've dried two loads of wood, um, maintained a nice temperature at 120 degrees, and then was able to sanitize at 140, so I was really happy with the insulation. But getting ready for solar, I wanted to get that done before I put the polycarbonate on. So we painted it black, and the other guy bouncing around there right now was Paul the electrician, and he was very helpful. Um, he cleaned up a lot of what I thought I would have done. He just came in and did a really nice job. Currently, it has two circuits that go to the inside. I think I'm going to up that to four circuits, so I have um, a little bit more control uh, over uh, how it operates. Fans on one, being able to run the dehumidifier on another, and the two oil heaters. I probably will do a whole separate video on operating the solar kiln plus dehumidification hot box and just give you their uh, sensor push love that product um, I'll put a link somewhere that's how I'm able to kind of monitor what's going on inside the kiln the humidity and the temperatures and then I also use some ink bird to turn heaters on and off and that's been really successful putting down the Volcom I Volcom putting down the polycarbonate I put Volcom down underneath all of it so it's all sealed up and that's kind of as far as we got with this so now I have to finish the outside I joke a lot about finishing the doors the doors the vents in the doors 
need to go on and then I'll wrap this whole thing in steel um, siding before it gets pushed outside but there is uh, the first load going in thanks to Ben for helping me and then it was uh, Rick who came and unloaded that kiln and we loaded it up again and so I just there's my doors for now a little bit of insulation tape it up and get going and it's dried thanks so much for following along this has been Glenn workshop at the gardens do check back because there's going to be more videos about this kiln about this operation and just the overall what I do here at the workshop at the gardens as far as um, life in the log yard but thanks so much and uh, best to you leave a comment if you have any questions thanks so much